Hey, what is up, everybody, and welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, that's a good show. It is a good show. I think show. That, that it's off it's of Netflix It's also a dumb now. show, but it's a good show. It's an amazing show. Don't you make fun of it. Oh, I think dumb is what it's aiming for. What if it is so smart that it just seems dumb, but it's actually way smarter than we are even able to comprehend? I think that's a way of... Uh being dumb uh, (laughs) oh i should pour tea for you isn't that polite oh guess what i got today it's uh actually i bet you can guess potentially is that uh uh, just sencha it is okay it is some good old are you sure it's not gonna be like this one's also not actually tea it's just it looks like green tea it's a trick still (laughs) it looks like green tea it's called sencha but what it actually is is just like Green apple shavings and yeah, Jolly it's like Rancher It's TM. Yep. It's a, it's just a clever name. <laughs> and it's like, no, it's Zensha. Oh, okay. You got to change the spelling somewhat. And now I have to start a tea company That's where I make reasonable Zensha name, tea. Actually. That would actually probably pretty sell good. pretty well. That's pretty clever. Nobody copied that idea for me. That's mine. Actually, um, a online friend of mine named Nat, uh, I think his last name is Eliason. I never know how to pronounce it. I've never like talked to him. Okay. Voice wise, I've only texted and uh, tweeted, but he just started a tea company. So he's like doing blogging and all this kind of stuff, but now he's also doing like a, a mail order tea, potentially subscription. I'm not sure. Oh. But it's kind of cool because he's been like tweeting his whole process, setting it up, getting a tea supplier, building a website and everything. It looks pretty good. That's it's cool. nice. It's clean. It's a minimalist site. I think you would approve. It's about tea. I do like tea. What's well, not to like? But yeah, uh, Sencha is fast becoming one of my favorite green mm-hmm. teas. I do want to go get some of the green apple Sencha that our Denver tea shop sells at some point. I just need to get to a point where I don't feel bad putting more tea in the tea cabinet. I think that might take you five years. It probably will. <laughs> By which time some of it will probably not even be that good anymore. That's true. Well, what if I drink like 18 glasses of tea a day? Then I can get through it. You'll be very hydrated. Year. I will be hydrated. And that's true. The bo- the bonus is that right now I'm not aware of any negative effects of drinking tea, but hmm. you will root those effects out if you drink 18 glasses a day. You will find out if there are any that's negative true. effects. You're going to know. Well, I've been wondering about this because when you look on the nutrition facts and like a Celestial Seasonings herbal tea box, um, let's just say like the cinnamon apple one. If you do the cinnamon apple, it's like a, a very flavorful tea, like extremely yeah. flavorful. But it's zero calories, zero sugar, well, yeah. zero everything. And you look on the ingredients and it's just cinnamon and a little bit of ginger Mild and a few other. essence of things. Right. So what I have to wonder is, like, it doesn't taste like nothing. So clearly something is going to your body, right? Yeah, but you don't digest everything. Oh, I guess that would make sense. Yeah. Do you digest cinnamon? I don't know. I bet, you, I bet you do. I think I've read articles about, like, the health benefits. Of it may also be cases. that they're just allowed to round in a certain way on the thing. Or that, that makes sense. you know, maybe if you had all of it, you'd get some calories. But if you have a single tea bag, yeah, it rounds to nothing. Well, I always I think about know. things in terms of, uh, like, going to extremes. Like, if you drink one glass of tea a day, it's probably fine. But if you have, you know, like, the person who sent us a question for our five questions, like, last year... They said they were drinking, like, what, four liters of green tea a day? Oh, yeah, it's pretty intense. Like, at that point, you have to ask, you know, is this overkill? How much caffeine am I getting? And what other elements or minerals or vitamins are in there that I don't want to be getting too much of? Yeah. So I might stay away from the 18 glasses a day. Anyway, what are we talking about on Uh, today's episode? Today we're talking about how to make your life seem longer, you know, because I like to have existential crisis all the time. <laughs> this my, could be called existential crisis, the podcast. They're my favorite. And uh, so, you know, you get that effect and everybody seems to experience it, that time seems to keep going by so quickly. Yeah. You're just like, oh, how did I just graduate? Oh God, I'm 27. Mm-hmm. But when you, you remember all these things from when you were a kid and you were like, it didn't feel like it was short then. Yeah. There was so much time. So I wanted to talk about Ways to sort of uh, combat this effect as you age so that you can continue to, you know, enjoy and uh, appreciate the time in life rather Mm -hmm. than just saying, whoops. Yep. (laughs) I don't know what I did then, but I certainly did something. I was thinking about this the other day because it just seems like days go by so quickly now. Yeah. 
which, and I was reading up on this, it seems like people typically feel like the individual day is long. And I think this is because people are at work and it feels long because it's boring, but it's like the, it's like this converse thing where the day feels long, but then when you look back over time, it feels short. It feels like it breezed by in the aggregate. Yeah. But for me, days feel super short and I don't know why. Cause like right now I know I'm experiencing probably an hour's worth of conversation. I'm going to do many other things today, but it just seems like I wake up and before I know it, it's bedtime again. And I'm like, ah, I have to go to bed again. I mean, yeah, on, on a surface level, I would, I would just first guess you're probably trying to accomplish a lot of things in a day and feel like you're running out of time. That's probably what But the is. people at work probably aren't that invested in their work and they're just waiting for the future. They're waiting to get out of work. Mm, so, so they don't exist in that time. They're just waiting. Yeah. It's, that's weird though, because it's cool because it's like, it depends on your mindset about mm-hmm. what your work is too. Do your days feel short too or not? That depends. They feel very short when I overwhelm myself which is fairly frequently, and as always, I am working on that. So what you're telling me is I'm always overwhelming myself, essentially. Have you seen that board? Have you ever checked (laughs) off everything on it, Tom? I come over here and there's like 20 new boxes every day and there are like three checked off. I have it. I know know I've done videos where I say like, only have three things in your checklist every single day, but I never do. Yeah. There are many things where you could say, like, my YouTube channel is an aspirational project. Like, I'm sharing this these effective techniques with people, but really it's like, yeah, they this are is effective. what you They're should be hard. doing, Tom. <laughs> you don't do this. Why yeah. don't you do it? Yeah, the YouTube channel is like how to be a perfect human. And if you think that I'm anything like the, well, I would, I, I don't know. If you think I'm anything mm-hmm. like what the YouTube channel says to do with your life, you can't be all of those That's things at true. once anyway. You'd probably no. overwhelm yourself just doing that. Uh, yeah. And one thing that I think about and worry about all the time is, you know how you go through life and at one point in your life, something works really well. And then maybe at a different point in your life, like the opposite works well. Yeah. I worry that I'm going to make videos about that. And then like my videos contradict themselves. That's probably already true somewhere. Oh, I know it's true somewhere. Cause I did that video like probably three years ago at this point about why you shouldn't tell people about your goals. And then like, I do tell people about my goals still. And I think that that's a case where it's like nuanced. And yeah, I feel I like- do, I do think both of those things are like still, Yeah, it's true in a way, depending on what your purpose is in telling people about your goals, I think. Yeah, I think with that thing, like for me personally, it does help me to tell my social media about my goals because then I feel accountable because I have like this image to uphold there. And then telling people like you, my goals works because I know that you are going to hold me accountable to them and make fun of me if I don't do them. You're not the kind of person that would be like, well, that's so cool that you're going to run a marathon and then do nothing well, about it afterwards. I'm also fairly, I'm not that emotive yeah. on, on a lot of things. So like, if you're like, Hey, look at this new project, I'm probably going to be like, Oh, that's cool. That is exactly how you'd be. I'm yeah. not going to be like, whoa, I can't believe you're going to do that. I'm so amazed. You're so <laughs> impressive. I I'm not going to give you all that dopamine. I'm just going to be like, that's cool. And then I'll be impressed later. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think you and I are different I, in that regard. I think I'm g- going to be the one who's a little more excited and psyched about things. Yeah. I'm so, so, I'm so neutral me. that I can't, <laughs> I can't ruin the goal. That's true. Well, maybe people should tell me because I do feel like I follow up and ask them how it's going. Like a certain friend of ours saying they're going to write a book. Oh, yeah. I actually, did follow up actually, on that Actually, I, I read some of that. Oh, yeah? So, yeah. Oh, nice. That means it exists. Yes. That makes me happy. Yep. That means there's progress happening. And I dig it. Good. Actually, you know what? Uh, the reason I followed up with him on that is because another friend of ours, he didn't even tell me he was doing this, uh, but our friend Aaron started his own blog, I oh. think reviewing anime, and I just found it on his Twitter, and then I remembered to text our friend that was writing the book, and I was like, hey, Aaron just started a blog. What are you doing? And he's like, I'm actually still writing the book. I just am not yeah. really showing people the progress. Oh, see, there's an example book. of like you can't see not it. focusing too much on bragging about working on it. Mm-hmm. Just secretly doing stuff. Yep, and I'm happy to hear that it is it's going well. So, but yeah, I do worry about that. I worry about contradictions popping up on the YouTube channel, and I think that there's like a justification for it because there are times at which opposite things do work. But I don't know. Yeah it can be misconstrued as, as inconsistent, I guess. Uh, so I did some research on this episode because I was curious about what, what other things had to say 
on the whole question of like why time seems to speed up when we get older. Yeah. Uh, Scientific American had an article and I pulled a couple of quotes from it that basically sum this issue up pretty well. So the way that they explained it is as follows. They said, time does fly when we are having fun. Engaging in a novel exploit makes time appear to pass more quickly in the moment. But if we remember the activity later on, it will seem to have lasted longer than more mundane experiences. The reason is that our brain encodes new experiences, but not familiar ones, into memory. And our retrospective judgment of time is based on how many new memories we create over a certain period. In other words, the more new memories we build on a weekend getaway, the longer that trip will seem in hindsight. So it is kind of that contradiction where it flies when you're doing it, but there are more memories to encode, so it seems longer. Yeah. So I feel like part of the reason that people's lives seem to speed up is that they just kind of fall into a routine yeah and there's just nothing for the brain to encode like if you spend two hours a day in traffic getting to work your brain doesn't care about that so maybe it'll encode like a snapshot of driving to work and that's all it ever remembers yeah you're gonna you're just gonna erase that every single commute on all five of your work days that week are gonna feel like one yeah so you're kind of just losing 10 hours one awful commute yeah though you can make it better you with, can make it better um i guess we'll there's the obvious ones like podcasts and audiobooks, which is typically what I do. You could carpool with somebody else and then have conversations. Oh, or you could get a bike. Even though I know you hate biking in Denver. You know what's worse than biking in Denver? Driving in Denver. Well, I could see that depending on where I was going. That's actually interesting to me because you've told me on numerous occasions that you don't mind driving in Denver because you just go into that whole zen in the moment mind state where you think I'm driving right now and I don't care if there's a ton of traffic, but on the bike oh, path, well, that's you, true. you don't seem to be able to get into that state. Oh, I, I could get into that state. I haven't ridden my bike yet this year, so mm. I'm still functioning off of the hesitant anxiety given to me by the last time I tried last year. <laughs> so... I won't like it the first like three or four times I go out there, but when I get mm. used to it and then I stop dreading the crowd, yeah. once I actually get out there, it'll probably be fine. I'm just, you know, it's just dread and I haven't really had time to bother challenging it yet. You have to, you have to kill that dread. I do need to kill that judge dread. Judge it. I just been, that just was been, a uh, weak judge busy. dread reference. Yeah, I see what you did there. It wasn't a good one. The movie's good though. I haven't even seen it. I it's, just know it exists. Did, you saw the raid, right? I don't know. Did it's I? Like kung Fu movie in a derelict apartment they, building. Now, see, this actually, Indonesia. this is a good good tie back in because all those movies seem the same to me. So <laughs> What, kung fu movies? I, I, I can just picture a generic movie with lots of fighting action right now, and it's probably all of them that I've seen minus yeah. a couple scenes. That's basically it. My brain compressed it, and I do not really remember them. Mm, I remember it because I like kung fu action movies. Yeah. Uh, Dread felt like that, but with a much bigger building and a little less kung fu and more guns. But it was good. Yeah, it's like the, an example the, of a remake done well. The only thing I think I can remember is John John Wick when the when the guy's like, oh. <laughs> that single word is more memorable to me than the entirety of the movie. <laughs> that may <laughs> because be Because it was so favorite. unexpected. I think that's my favorite part of John Wick. It's just, that's all I remember. <laughs> and that's all I really need to know is that sums up everything for me. Yep. Great experience. That's a wonderful movie. I love that movie. And that scene is great. Um, so my suggestion to you to get over this dread is I imagine if the if the path is so crowded for you, that you have to get off your bike and walk. Well, it You're was probably once. biking on a weekend or something. It was once, and I don't remember any of the context about why it was busy. All you, the other times it was perfectly fine. Yeah, you're probably on a weekend because the path gets really crowded on weekends, and even I barely like riding on the weekends. If you go out and say, like if you wanted to start working at the downtown co-working place, which I think would be fun to do, riding your bike on the path in the morning at like 7 a.m. is not bad at all. Hmm. If you're me humble brag, you're going to be passing everyone all the time because I tend to ride faster than most bikers. Oh, but see, I'm not going to do you that. You don't. So I think you're only going to have to pass the walkers and that's only about half the people. So it should be fine. Yeah. I on purpose bike pretty slowly. Just taking it slow. Yeah. Like the whole Zen biking thing. Yep. Mm, I can't do that. Just got to get Too back hardcore. into the habit. I finally hit 20 miles an hour, uh, average speed though. That was like 
going all out and I'm not going to want to do that very often because it was very exhausting. Um, but that was something checked off the impossible list. But I do think that would be a great way to make the commute seem less boring. Now, I guess if you bike to work every single day, you are still going to eventually crunch all those memories into one little snapshot because it's still probably the same route. Well, so, the same so kind that's of a way of making it better in the moment. Yeah. Your, your but it day, is making your it better day will moment. feel nicer in the moment because mm-hmm. you have time to actually relax. Yeah. I think usually we cram so many things into our days that we feel rushed and overwhelmed at all times. Mm -hmm. So the day is going to go by so quickly because we're going to look at this list that we ostensibly wrote for a single day. And we're going to be like, I am only a third of the way through that and the day's over. How did that day pass so quickly? Whereas realistically, it's just because we imagined a day was way longer. I think that might be what it it is. We're constantly disappointing ourselves because we feel like the day can hold more than it really can. And this is something that I wrote down for my like theories of why life seems to go faster. My life is so much more complex than it used to be. Um, And this is kind of silly, but I was watching Anna play Monster Hunter yesterday and she's at the, I forget, it's the people that do research and stuff like that, I think. The I don't remember. They're in the hub area. They're people. And there's one guy, he's this old guy with elf ears and he's old and, and he's got a beard and he's like, elf or something but he's just sitting on this heap of books like reading a single book and i was like in this fantasy world i bet you that that guy woke woke, wakes up every day and he just sits on his pile of books and researches and that's all he has to do like that's the one thing on his checklist is wake up and do monster research and i'm just going to be sitting on that pile of books every day meanwhile i'm waking up on a friday morning thinking okay I need to outline two podcast episodes and outline two videos and build the podcast set. And I need to finish the website design for Martin and I need to make tea and go for a bike ride and make breakfast. Yeah. And later on, I have to go to a movie and I have to go to a birthday party, which means I have to get a present. Oh, so God. it's like, there's a zillion things I have to do and I likely will not get all of them done. But also I think it's like, there's the fact that I have so much planned means my mind is always looking forward to the next thing instead of yeah. actually truly experiencing the one that I'm doing right now. And that's really hard to get over. I don't really know how to yeah. stop doing that. Well, and you have no freedom. You have, yeah. There are no periods of time where you can be like, hey, that looks fun. Oh, but I can't. Mm-hmm. Maybe tomorrow. And then yeah. like the the reading thing, that that example actually works pretty well because – I think it was, I don't remember what day of the week it is today. Earlier this week. It's Friday. Earlier, I've been buying a car, so there were like 17,000 things I've had to do. That's why I've been overwhelmed this week. Because I got to get insurance. I got to do all the other stuff for the apartment. I don't remember them anymore because that stuff was dumb. But there was one day where I just sat sat out on the deck and read for 90 minutes. Mm. And I got so deeply into that book during that that after I was done, I felt like a whole day's worth of existence had happened for me while reading Ah, because I was so deep into the one activity that I I had done like a day's worth of focus. That makes sense. Just in there. Yeah. Whereas when we have so many things to do, we can't actually get that deep into anything. Mm -hmm. That actually happened for me this week too. Yeah? Um, It's sad to admit it, but basically no work was done on Monday. Which I don't, fired. Feel, I don't feel too bad about this because I did work Sunday. Uh, but Not Monday, fair. I got up and I did my morning routine. I may have done a tiny bit of work in the morning, but then I told Anna that I wanted to go to the trampoline place. So we did, which is amazing. And you still need to go. And I came home and I was like, okay, it's, I think, 2.30. I'm going to spend the rest of the day working. I'll, I'll get some stuff done. It'll be fine. But first, I want to continue reading this book that I'm reading. And then I read for the rest of the day. Yeah. I think until 9 p.m. and I finished the entire book. Oh. And probably read like 200 pages. That is the most focus I have even <laughs> imagined you having in years. Yep. Huh. Uh, so I'm now on the third. Must be a fair book. It was great. Yeah, it was the second Shade of Magic book. I, I just got it. that ebook for free yesterday because Tor.com's doing oh. it if you sign up for their newsletter Wait, right what's now. what's Tor.com? I don't know, something. Is that like a publishing house or is it yeah, like a... Yeah, no, it's it's legit. Okay. Okay. I feel good now because... It's not like a torrent. Somebody... Co- okay, somebody commented on my Instagram because I posted a picture of this book and they said, 
it's free on Tor. And I thought they were posting a link to a torrent. And I was like, gonna delete their comics. I thought it was like a pirating comment. And I forgot to, because again, I'm not that focused. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, it's, it's uh, Is it still free or is it like a limited time? It is time a thing? site for science fiction and fantasy readers and has oh, a bunch of stuff. That's right. Okay. So it's it's real. They're just doing a partnership thing right now Is with that. Is so. that still up? Like, is it still free? Is it something that we I, should I got put, it yesterday. Is it something we should put in it the... It should be there for I don't know how long. How do you spell it? T-O-R. Oh, because when I... Oh, so they have to compete with Tor, the browser, slash, like... Yeah. Private dark um, web access tool. But this is also where the um, little short prequel to the girl who fell beneath or no, the girl who whatever fairyland circumnavigated. That's the first oh, one. That's the right. prequel to that is, is on oh, tour. That's and cool. I think it might have been originally published there. Okay. Let's see here. Oh, you know what? What day is it today? I don't know. I bet you I can find out by the 15th. Is, oh, okay. So we can't put this in the show notes because it says here download oh, well, a free I ebook. Got it of A Darker Shade of Magic before June 16th. Oh, well. So this will be done tomorrow, and this episode is not going out for like a week after that. Uh, sorry. So sorry, everybody, you can't get this book for free unless you go to your local library. What? What's that? And actually, I feel bad because I did that video on how to avoid bad books and where to find good books, and I talked about Goodreads, and I talked about getting recommendations from friends. Oh, did and all you not mention stuff. libraries? I didn't mention libraries because... I feel so stupid for this. I haven't checked out a book at a library in so many years. I've gone to libraries to work. Like the Boulder Public Library is actually a great place to work. Their internet is ridiculous. It's so fast. And they have these um, work rooms you can check out and just like work in solitude for as long as you want because they're not popular. But every time I want a book, I just buy it at this point because I think like, well, I want it on my shelf. I'm just kind of a collector. So I just didn't think of libraries. But yeah, use your local library. In fact, I think Ashley can attest to this. Isn't there like a ebook borrowing system? Oh yeah, system? you can borrow digital books yeah. from the library. So even if you just want to use your Kindle, like you can do that. That's cool. That was the first way I ever got into audiobooks. Is my library had like a giant catalog of CD based ones. So when I was a kid, that's how I listened to Hitchhiker's Guide and Ender's Game. Um, I'll admit that Audible is more convenient, but hey, I got lots of audiobooks. Yeah. So, oops, I didn't mean to turn my iPad off there. Uh, I digress. That was a great book. And I basically spent my entire Monday. I almost said wasted, but you know what? It's not a waste. Because it no. was like several hours of focused reading time, and it was great. And you'll likely remember that more than if you had just filled it with like, well, I better do some laundry and do some normal stuff and clean the dishes. Yep. Yep. And as much as I like putting in like a little bit of practice every day on stuff, like with a guitar, all the breakthroughs come when I'm sitting there for like an hour or two. Yeah. So I get a little bit better when I practice every day, which is why I practice every day. But it's like slow growth and maintenance. Yeah. It keeps it fresh in your head. Yeah, exactly. This week's episode of our show is brought to you by Mac Weldon, a premium men's essentials brand that uses smart design and premium fabrics to make the best performing and most comfortable underwear and socks, undershirts, t-shirts, even hoodies and sweatpants that you are ever going to wear. Now, a couple of years ago, I made a concerted effort to start dressing better in my everyday life, but one area I didn't apply that scrutiny to was my essentials, the underwear and the undershirts, all that kind of stuff. I basically had a sock and underwear drawer filled with whatever I could find at Walmart or the department store for many many years, which is why I was pretty excited to be able to give Mack Weldon's catalog a try. And as I've been out walking around VidCon today, I've been wearing one of their V-neck undershirts, along with a pair of their Silverline antimicrobial underwear, which actually has a fabric that destroys odors throughout the day, and a pair of their dress socks with my dress boots. And I do want to give special mention to those socks. Everything that I've tested out has been really comfortable, but the socks are the standout for me. I've owned many different pairs from many different brands over the years, and these were instantly the most comfortable ones that I have ever tried tried. And the shopping experience on their website is really convenient as well. Not only do you not have to go to the store and try and pick and choose from a million different brands that don't have a consistent fit and feel, but their website is also really well designed. And I love how it has this little drawer that actually just pops out the moment you put something in your cart so you can keep shopping and don't have to go to a different page. And the best part about shopping with them is that if you don't like what you try, they'll actually let you keep it and give you a refund no questions asked. 
So if you're making an effort to dress better like I am and you wanna upgrade those essentials in your wardrobe, your underwear, your socks, the undershirts, the things you don't usually think about but that actually make a big difference in your everyday life in terms of comfort and performance, then head on over to MacWeldon.com. And if you wanna get 20% off of your first order, then enter the promo code CIG at checkout. Once again, that is MacWeldon.com, M-A-C-K-W-E-L-D-O-N.com and use promo code CIG at checkout. Big thanks to Mac Weldon for sponsoring this episode and supporting our show and let's get back into it. But so I guess here's a question for you. Do you think like that slow growth, like putting a little bit every day makes life feel longer or does it have to be the long, super focused practice sessions and things like that? I am personally wary of forcing long, long practice, practice sessions because um, basically I think that if you do the slow growth, you keep the thing as a part of your life. And as long as you don't have too many things filling up your days with like habits and routines like that, then Mm -hmm. that's totally cool because occasionally you'll just – like at the end of a book, if I get to 75% of the way through a book, almost invariably I then sacrifice everything else I was going to do to finish it all all in one go. So the the slow growth leads to inspiration to read it all at once, whereas if you had Mm -hmm. sat down on purpose and wrote down, read this whole book today. Let me make that a checklist. I would have. I would find that overwhelming. Yeah. I would put it off all day long, thinking, "Well, I don't want to start that yet because then I have to sit down for like twelve hours." Uh, I'll I'll get to it. Like if you try to force the long things, I think it can backfire because okay. you will dread doing it, and then you won't do it. Whereas if you can get started, occasionally inspiration strikes. Mm. Okay. See, I want. I'm trying to figure out if I 100% agree with this or not, because I feel like sometimes you do need to build the discipline to put in the hours like if you're a writer i think that's useful it's just if you're not already disciplined enough to like i wouldn't start out saying i'm going to read the Mm. whole book today i agree with that if i wanted if i wanted to do a big thing i would start out with at least a half hour or an hour or something and you know i wouldn't be like i'm going to read 90 minutes every day i'm going to fail on day two yeah whoops uh if i had done a half hour Throughout the week, I probably would have read more than I have total now that I've given up after failing. So, like, you don't want to go too high either. The 25 pages a day thing was was good for me. Well, one, I had a bet with you. Yeah. Like, there was 100 bucks on the line. It was also very short term. It was three months. So, so it was like like forever. uh, I mean, three months is kind of, it feels short term on a long, big, big scale, but it's, you're doing it for a while. Yeah, but you have a way out. You can imagine, you know how like the end of a semester in school, you're like, oh, I hate all this work. It's the worst. But what keeps you going mm. is that yeah. it's going to stop though. So even if you're overwhelmed on one day, you can still do it because you'd be like, it's just just for now. It'll yeah. be fine. So a 30-day challenge or a three-month challenge or something is a good way to get that intense practice in. And that mm. that actually is a very important part of one of the things I like to do to keep life not monotonous as okay. an adult, you know, because otherwise... School has semesters, and I've talked about this before. School has semesters. Our whole lives change every semester. Yeah. We have have new people we see every day. We have a new lunch schedule. We have new buildings. We have new topics. Everything is just brand new. And when you're an adult, when you graduate, that doesn't ever happen by itself. You have to force it. Well, I guess if you got fired, it would happen by itself. But for for positive-wise... It happens only when you force a big change in your life. When yeah. you say, I'm going to do this now, because if I wanted to, I could just do the same thing every day until I died. Yep. I have that freedom now as an adult. Yeah. And I should probably pursue the freedom to not do that. So I like to make semester like changes and say a 30 day challenge where I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get really, really into reading. And I'm going to read like an hour every day for 30 days. 30 hours of reading, and that's going to be my main thing. Hmm. Or um, I did the 30-day challenge to start off my Instagram to do post yeah. a photo every day. Now I've posted a photo every day for more than two months. Is that something you intend on going, like keeping with? I don't know when I would stop it, and I keep going. So You wh- seem to be enjoying you it. You know, we'll see. I feel like the photos are improving. But so. it feels like that was a very memorable thing for me to have started doing. Yeah. And it would have been scary had I sat down and said, I'm going to post a photo every day forever. I I would not have started that. That would have been like, yeah, but I can't guarantee that I can do it two months from now. Well, I can't guarantee that still, but I have done it for two months. Mm -hmm. So starting out 
small, like a 30 day challenge gives you, gives you an out in case it isn't working out. I feel like you've made a lot of improvements in this particular area this year. Because yeah. I remember us having a conversation last year, and this wasn't on the podcast, this was just in private, where you said something along the lines of like, I barely remember what's happened this year. Last year Which I mean last year wasn't was good in many ways. Great. But I just I remember like in that and Yes, I still barely element, remember what happened. You said like I remember moving to Denver. And then that's basically it. I moved to Denver. I found out I had OCD because it got significantly worse. Mm -hmm. And then I wasted the rest of the year living in my head. Yeah. It was uh, not that memorable. And this year I've been I've been trying to do a better job. This year's been far better. That. You also actually have traveled. Lot, so. You guys oh, yeah. have traveled, what, twice this we, year so far? Or three, year, three times? In the last year, we have road tripped to Portland and back twice. That's right. Portland was twice. And, and then then we've been to Iowa a couple times. So you've done four travel trips i guess that i should have just said trips <laughs> four travel four travel trips. trips travel trips uh you've done you've done four trips you've done this instagram thing um, um i'm not sure oh, about, actually oh, you this started is, cooking this you is like, useful did all the woodworking stuff so along with this 30-day challenge semester changing thing where i want to i want to focus on different things and it's not always a 30-day challenge sometimes it's output based so hmm. I am engaged now. I don't think I've said that on the podcast because I don't care if everybody knows. The important part is... Well, wait a minute, but people are going to care, though. Well, too bad. I was about to say this, but I didn't want to mention just in case you didn't want me to. Oh, I just... But yeah, Martin asked his girlfriend to marry him. Yeah, and she <laughs> said... Uh, she said, I guess. Okay. <laughs> but like one of my goals there was I legitimately started woodworking, mm -hmm. bought a bunch of saws and stuff, and taught myself how to do this. I, it was very frustrating because I could only do it while she was at work. But I built a ring box. I looked up how to make it. I tried yeah. a bunch of stuff. I failed. I have like seven or eight failures where I was like, mm -hmm. okay, so the end grain, much too strong for this Forstner bit. I'm gonna need to go into the edge to make mm. it work out. And I, you know, so that wasn't a 30 day challenge, but it was a significant and memorable project yeah. that I obsessed over. It's something you're not gonna forget about. Yeah, and so, Basically, all of these things, I've been keeping an accomplishment log at, for all of 2018. Oh, okay. So I've got lots of things in here. And when I when my memory fails me, as memories do, I can say, wait, what have I done this year? Oh, I've uh, finished several books, uh, did several language goals, beat some video games, made a block print for no reason just to experiment, uh, finish, finish more books. Is the block the print ring on box. Instagram anywhere? I posted it on Twitter once. Okay. Um entered photos and got accepted into a photography exhibit where I took classes and uh, finished more woodworking projects, got engaged, beat more games, posted portfolio photos to Instagram for 30 days, and just on and on and on, just tons of things that I would not have been able to just list to you had, had I just been trying to pull from memory. So yeah. now I look through it and I say, I can remember all of 2018 now because yeah. each of these accomplishments is the pieces of 2018 that matter. I don't care sure. what days I had the kitchen clean. That doesn't matter. Yeah. The, no. Forget it. You're right, brain. Good job. Erase those memories. They are dumb. Mm -hmm. But these ones are the memories that matter this year. And I can now like go through and remember each specific month. That is smart. Because uh, I don't yeah. remember last year and that bothered me. Yeah. That's I, why I, I remember think that, about this I so remember much. that conversation because I was just like, I think I, I was like listing off things I'd done. You were just like, I don't know what's going on this year. I was kind of sad about that. It is sad. So it's sad. really That's cool to I'm hear like, that you were doing this Oh, no, this now. life is disappearing because yeah. I'm losing my brain. And now I'm doing this, and I'm just, I feel so much better mm -hmm. because even if I feel I'm not productive enough, oh, no, I just look at this and say, wait, yeah, you are. Don't be dumb. Y mm. You're doing fine. There you go. I don't have a chronological accomplishment log. I feel like I tend to remember the things I do a little more, maybe just because I've been more used to it. Uh, I think an accomplishment lot could be good though, but yeah, you know, like a lot of things have happened this year. I think a lot of my year kind of gets broken up with travel. So yeah. it almost feels kind of like a school thing where it's just like, there's a new adventure coming up every, Oh, like, well travel helps so. a lot. Yeah. And travel really helps to reset your, well, reset your goals, reset your mind, broaden your horizons. I mean, was, was the first Portland trip, was that a vacation? Or was it for a, it was a art thing. I had told Ryan, shout out to Team Dog, that we were going to visit at That's one point. That's right, yeah. And so I decided, you know what I should do? 
instead of making social commitments and then finding a weird anxiety related reason to back out of them, mm -hmm. I'm going to go all out and actually make it up there. I'm still scared of planes. So I'm just going to have to make it a road trip, Yeah. which it turned out I loved anyway, because driving up there is beautiful and road trips like you like biking or walking somewhere. It was about embracing sort of the journey itself. Yeah. So if I had taken a plane up to Seattle and or Portland, it's only the destination. So I'm on mm -hmm. the plane and I'm just like impatient. I'm just like, I'm not there yet. This is only about this. But when the road trip happened each day, even just driving was so much time to let my mind wander. Yeah. So much time to think, reflect, talk with Ashley and so much time to see things and stop. We stopped in like four different places, but because the the traveling itself was a journey as well, it felt like I had several vacations. The mm. vacation that took place in the car where we just kind of talked and thought about stuff and looked at pretty scenery. Then the vacation in Seattle where we stayed with Ryan and then the vacation where we were in Portland for a day or two. Like yeah. it all feels separated. And locational separation actually is another point that I have in here somewhere because – since our minds are compressing things, the more places we go, yeah. even even if it's just within your town, you know, the, the better we remember it. It's kind of like, you know, uh, you know, the doorway effect. Hmm. It's a concept where like, so I think to myself, I'm going to go to the kitchen and get a drink. As soon as I exit your room and pass through the doorway, I'm like, wait, what am I? What? Oh, yeah. What's yeah. What's going on? And there's some research that points to the, like, the doorway, the locational change as being the problem. Okay. Like our brains say, we're in a new context. Throw away that old stuff. Yeah, those are the whole context-based learning thing as well. Yeah, so, like, I'm in the shower. I've got all these great ideas. And in order to remember them, I have to, like, keep saying them out loud desperately, trying not to lose them. Do you have a shower notebook? I did. I don't know where it is right now. Oh, okay. It's, I've got one on the it's wall. somewhere. It's nice. Yeah. Though I feel like I've sacrificed the ability to have ideas in the shower because I always just sing in the shower. Oh, well, which that's... I enjoy. That's so true. That's not an fun. idea. It's not an idea, but it is fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Dory thing is really interesting. And I don't know what it is, but I just... I find it fascinating and so enjoyable to go to new places in my town and to, like, build out my map of the town. Yeah. And there's, and there's a lot of research about how locations kind of have, like, a special place in human memory. I mean, I guess it makes sense if you think back, we have to remember where food is, where you shouldn't go, all kinds of stuff like that. But yeah, when you go to new places, it just makes the memories seem more vivid because your brain has to reconstruct the environment rather than being able to conveniently just pull, you know, your living room, the place you've always been. Yeah. So it's very helpful. How did you feel when you came back from the vacation? Um, refreshed, like, yeah. always. Invariably, anytime I leave town, even just to go to Iowa, I rethink my entire life trajectory and mm -hmm. I come back really motivated and with new clarity on like everything. Yeah. And it, it is definitely a very blatant semester change sort of feel there because I come back just like I'm starting over, mm -hmm. even if I've only been gone for the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Even a weekend trip can do that. San Diego did that for us too. So it's kind of interesting. A month before we left for San Diego, Anna and I decided to not drink for 30 days because we're both the kind of people who find it easy to just like have a drink every night with dinner and we don't want to do that. Mm. So we were just like, all right, we're just going to go a month with just nothing. And it was like, it was kind of a hard month actually, like not super difficult. We didn't like ever come close to breaking it, but it was just like, some nights we're just like, man, I really wish we could have like a wine with dinner. Yeah. So we go to San Diego and the 30 days had ended the day we got there. So we usually did drink with dinner when we were going out, but the vacation was so refreshing and just like the daily routine of going to the beach and surfing every day and just like seeing all these people out there being super active. I came back, I felt so refreshed, so like ready to rethink my habits and everything. And weirdly, like in the two weeks we've been back, we haven't really wanted to drink with dinner. You're just, there's like no, motivated. yeah, there's no weird goal that's set up. There's no consequences set up. It's just like, I'll have wine if I go out to a restaurant, but I have, like, no desire to have it in the house now. Hmm. Just, like, there's something about that refreshing change and break that just makes me rethink my health. And I've been way more interested in, in being healthy when I got since I got back. Yeah. Like, I've always been, but since I got back, it's, like, ten times. Yeah, I think I think traveling, even if you're just going to, like... Honestly, there there's this, um, there's this bar slash bookstore in, mm -hmm. in town 
and they have like an Airbnb right above. Oh, yeah. And Ashley and I want to stay there, even though it's literally in town. It's like a staycation. And I do not imagine that that will feel any different than traveling somewhere else. It will probably be just as refreshing to be mm. like, hey, I'm not in my house. Well, I was actually having dinner with um, with one of Anna's family members and a friend of hers last night. And they were saying, because they live in Minneapolis, uh, they were saying there's like a tour you can do where it's like a staycation tour, basically, where you basically like treat your town like you're a tourist for a weekend. And... They said, we did stuff that we have never done living here. Yeah. Just because when you live in a town, you kind of push it off. You think, oh, I could do that whenever. You know, if you live in Chicago, I can go to the top of the Willis Tower whenever I want. Or I can go to the mountains whenever I want. That was a big thing for Denver. Oh, yeah. But the... obviously, we don't go to them every day, it turns yeah. out. We can go hiking whenever we want. And I had that condo up in the mountains that I was sharing with people. So I could have gone skiing literally whenever I wanted. And I didn't go nearly as much as I thought I would. And I think that's why, because when you can go literally whenever you want, you tend to push it off and think, well, I got to do this, this, and this. So I, you know, that's, that's waiting for me. Well, it's kind of funny. We let the monotony push off all the novelty, even though it is the novelty yeah. that will make us happy. Maybe that's one of the we big insights so here. We feel so guilty yeah. about our daily things. That's right. So the things we feel are urgent, even though they're not that important, we let them push off the things that we're, we're going to look back and yeah. feel those were, were important. Those are actually urgent. Yeah. Enjoying the place you live and at the places that you can see, that's, mm -hmm. that's urgent. So I feel like if you, if you want to actually do those things, you got to commit to them somehow, whether it's literally planning a vacation or signing up for an art show or, or like a photo contest like you were doing yeah. or a, a craft fair. I guess that's, that's the word I'm searching for right there for Ashley or a con like Anna's doing. Have something on the calendar. Uh, or have somebody that's going to be doing it with you who expects you to be there because otherwise it's very easy to push off. And then I really like your idea with the accomplishment journal. I kind of do that with my impossible list. It's not chronological, but I do put the date that everything was accomplished when it's accomplished. So I can look through here and I can see, oh yeah, the first time I did a 5k was in 2011. You know, the first time I hit my cycling goal was, you know, this year actually. And my deadlift goal was last year. It's, it's just kind of cool to look through here and be like, oh, wow, a bunch of really cool things did happen. So I think that people need to find a way to somehow document yeah. what they're doing. Well, I was uh, my therapist had said that it, was, it would be a good idea to keep a journal of some kind. And I was yeah. like, I don't want to write everything I do all day. But this, this is a cool compromise where I scroll through and I feel nothing but happy about how this yeah. year has gone. And that's been. I think it's a good thing. You to know, do. I, I don't know. I've enjoyed it a lot. I think journaling can be very helpful, and I'm glad that I did when I was doing my internship in um, sophomore year of college, because now I can look back and think, oh, I actually didn't like that. It felt oh, like a yeah. prison sentence. Because sometimes, you know, when the going gets tough or entrepreneurship is very stressful, it's easy to kind of sink back into that feeling of, well, a nine to five would just be easy. I could turn off my brain at 5 p.m., come home, do whatever I want, unlike now. And it gets tempting, but I go back and I read those journal entries and I realize that for me, at least, that's not the kind of work-life balance I want. Yeah. It just doesn't work. And what will end up happening is I will end up coming home and doing side projects and stressing myself out anyway. So I might as well let it be my full-time job if I can. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I want to go through a few other notes that I wrote down here. Um, but I, I think like the main thing is seek out new things, find a way to commit to them, and then keep an accomplishment journal. That's very that's very helpful. And then just make sure that you're constantly learning. You know? Yeah. Like this year alone, I've done like Ninja Warrior parkour training, skateboarding, figure skating, snowboarding, basketball, weightlifting, all kinds of sports things, guitar. I've started learning music production. This year feels packed and I think if I start doing what you're doing, I'll be able to look back on it and it won't seem like it flew by. No, it'll be like, whoa, I did like a hundred things. Yeah. I don't know if the days are going to start seeming longer. Maybe if I can like cut my commitments and only have a few things in a given day, that might help. But I don't want to worry too much about making the days feel long because the number one way to make the day feel long is to stare at a clock, which is kind oh, of... Oh, that, that like will make it feel thing. terrible long. <laughs> yeah. It's it's the, uh, the wrong goal to be shooting for. I think just... As long as you're not focusing too much on – so I think if you plan too much, this is both for your day but also for like if you plan out your whole week's tasks or something, 
you can go too far because routines and goals are really cool. Yeah. But if you find yourself fretting over like what you've planned three days from now, you may have gone too far Mm -hmm. and this ends up turning you into like a robot that does nothing but think about the future while being controlled by the plans of the past. You have no present. There's no present there. Yeah. So I think as long as you were able to get mindfully into your multiple tasks, it would still be fine as long as you're not like, "Uh oh, I have to finish this because of the next thing. Yep. That's the problem. You have to find the present. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, I had stuff on here, but like one way you can make your life feel less short is to make it actually longer. But... Oh, that's true, too. Do not yeah. neglect your health. Yeah. The ways know? to do that, are, they're pretty obvious. Eat less, eat better. For example, enough. I would get a lot of novelty if I uh, went and did some untrained mountain paragliding. That's I, true. That, I would remember those moments <laughs> as I was horrified and knew this was a bad idea. But I do that's not think true. it will lengthen my perception of life you since would remember I will it. probably shorten yeah. my life. You'll remember it right before your brain goes through your eyes. It will be a very (laughs) memorable, you know, thing. But it's still a bad idea. Uh, Yeah, that's probably true. So I guess get some training before you do mountain paragliding. Yeah. That's a good pro tip right there. That is a good pro tip. tweetable. Uh, Exercise every day. Go outside. I'm reading a book right now, and I need to remember the name of it. I think it's called The Story of the Human Body. Uh, Hmm. let Let me check. Is it like yeah. the Magic School Bus episode where they go inside Arnold? It's not like that. Okay. And it's also not like the Rick and Morty Aww. episode where there's like a theme park inside the person. Oh, no. It's more of a tour through the evolution of the human body. And right now it's talking about like the missing link and the common ancestors with apes and things like that and how human beings have adapted to our current environments, why we you know, are so much weaker than every other ape and why we're so unable to climb trees, but why we can walk upright, unlike most other apes. Uh, But eventually, I know the book's going to get into an analysis of why we fall prey to what they call mismatch diseases. So these are basically non-contagious, non-transmutable diseases that are a factor of our behavior and our environment being mismatched to our adaptations. So the fact that we get obese, the fact that we get heart disease and cancer and things like that, they are most probably a product of us not behaving in mm. sync with how our bodies are built. Like lifestyle illnesses. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Or like the fact that right now my back has a dull ache in it. It's because I wasn't built to be sitting in a chair podcasting and editing videos all day. I should be outside walking like 10 kilometers and climbing trees and hunting an antelope or something. Yeah. But and, I'm and I'm sure some, some things would probably still unfortunately happen to like prehistoric people or something well they usually just got but they didn't live killed. long enough to find <laughs> out also and yeah. it would probably be rarer because there's really no doubt that the sedentary lifestyle and diet that a lot of us follow does do things that yeah. are clearly preventable it, it kills us um though i did read a bunch of really cool statistics showing that uh, the whole conception that early man only lived until 35 or so is kind of flawed Basically, they're using averages, and the fact that the infant mortality rate was so high for most of human history oh. skews the average. Oh. Because if one out of every three babies dies, then clearly you're going to have an average of like, oh, that yeah, everyone dies at 35, and it's crazy to have a 70-year-old man. He's like a wizard to everyone else. In reality, kids that make it past the age of like five tend to live a good long life. Hmm. So, and I mean, there's definitely times in history, Black Plague, all kinds of stuff like that, where you know you do have people dying all over the place, but uh, I think the concept, the concept that until the you know 18th and 19th century, man died in his 30s is wrong. Uh, and we can get into that in another episode. I actually may want to do a book review of okay. the story of the human body, but I'm very uh, not far at the moment. Okay, so that'll be cool. a thing for a future episode. And I know we have at least two book reviews that we're going to do before that one. We do indeed. So keep an eye out for those. But I think this about wraps this episode up. Uh, what's the number again? 217? 217. I got that Notion chart open. I, I love Notion. It's so cool. I could just gush about it, but I'm not going to. Anna said I gushed about Notion for 15 minutes in the last episode before we actually got to the topic. I Oops. would not be surprised. <laughs> 
So I won't do that. I'm just going to wrap this episode up. Thank you guys so much for listening. You can find our show notes over at CIGpodcast.com slash 217. Or if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook Watch, you can find the link to the show notes down in the description of the video. Uh, if you have questions you want us to answer on this podcast or build episode data or put into five questions episodes, leave us a comment on either of those video platforms or you can send me a DM on Instagram. I'm at Tom Frankly over there or on Twitter, Tom Frankly. Uh, you are Yo Martholomew on indeed. Twitter and Instagram. So you can also DM him. Um, I try to answer my DMs when I have time and I also screenshot them and then I send them over to Martin so we get tons of questions for the podcast. Uh, you can also subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or whatever podcast episode player you are using on your phone. If you haven't done that already, that's a great way to get new episodes delivered right to your device every single Monday when they come out. It's probably the most convenient way to listen, so definitely do that if you haven't done that already. And last but not least, if you want to find our recommended books, all the gear that we recommend for making your student life better, and our college packing guide, you can find all those guides over at College Info Geek dot com slash resources. So thank you so much for listening and we'll see you as always in next week's episode. Thank you.